Well, 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 it's Monday, another week, and here we are at the well with Monday Manor. And I, I am anxious to see you here in this space so that we can share on this uh, topic of what if, what if, what if. Now, there's an old song, there's an old song that um, I always remind myself and us that I'm not a singer, but I love to sing. <laughs> You know, but um, I'm I'm hoping that many of you will join me. When you join me, just let me know you're join where you're joining me from. Let me see who you are. Good to have you, my brother. Thumbs up for that. All right. So the song says something like this. Um, well, it goes like this. <laughs> Never mind about the tune. If it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where <laughs> would i be mm. where would i be all right if i could sing i would sing but um i'll stick to preaching <laughs> all right Okay, we are going to wait for some people to join us here today because we, this song, this song um, is directly out of scripture, directly out of the book of Psalms. And many of the Psalms really and truly point to a place of God's intervention or the psalmist lamenting of God's distance, but you know, they're very personal and they're very um, direct in terms of what the psalmist was experiencing at that given time. So, good to have you here. What if, what if, what if, what if? Good to have you, Sister Helen. All right, we hope some others will join us today. What if? So, Psalm 124 is our scripture for today. Put that in for us, please. Hi, Delvin. Good to have you here. Psalm 124. And I want to read the Psalm from Psalm, uh, from the Passion Version of the Bible. Psalm 124. Today's a day to testify because sometimes we testify about what God has delivered us out of, delivered us through. But sometimes what we need to know is that he, he stopped some things, man. He prevented some things. There are some things that could have, should have, but they didn't happen because God intervened. Because God interrupted that plan, that plot, that pitfall, that setup. God said, not so. Mercy said, no. Hallelujah. So here's the psalmist, perhaps David saying verse 1 psalm 124 the passion version what if god had not been on our side speaking to israel what if god had not been on our side let all israel admit this what if god had not been there for us do you have any what ifs <laughs> do you have any what is can you look back over your journey over your life go back in your history man come on because we have been on a 21 day journey of thanksgiving today is day number 15 i believe and i can tell you that if we don't intentionally pause and remember the goodness of God and what he did not allow, what he prevented, we will sometimes become depressed. We would become honestly forgetful and it's like, life sucks. I don't understand why my life has to be this way. But look back, look back, look back over the mountains, man. Look back over the valleys. Look back over the places where you saw the hand of God directly rescuing you. I want us to talk about some rescue mission here today. Hallelujah. What if? What if? It's a question. What if God didn't show up? What if angels didn't come? What if prayers weren't answered? What if? 
the provision wasn't made. What if? What if the plan and the plot was executed as designed? Verse uh, 3, I believe, our enemies in their violent anger would have swallowed us up alive. The nations with their flood of rage, listen to the, the picture, the word picture, the metaphor, flood of rage. We've seen pictures of places being flooded. The enemy came in like a flood, the psalmist says, and would have swept us away and we would have drowned, perished beneath their torrent of terror, torrent of terror. Wow, hear the language. Verse 6, we can praise God over and over that he never left us. God wouldn't allow the terror of our enemies to defeat us. We are free from the hunter's trap. Listen to the metaphor again, the hunter's trap. There was a pitfall. There was a mindset. There was a, a, a mind set up. Yes, a landmine. There was a trap set. But God delivered you and God delivered me, right? We are free from the hunter's trap. Their snare is broken and we have escaped. Hallelujah. For the same God who made everything, our creator and our mighty maker, he himself is our help and our defender. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Hi, Kaisa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, Shumay. God bless each of you. Come on, invite somebody in the room today, man, because we are talking about what if. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? I know you have a testimony. I know you have a story to tell. I know you can look back and recall a moment in your life where you can say, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I don't know how it didn't, except that God intervened because it should have. Everything looked and poised and was set for this thing to happen but God. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you know what's coming to my mind? And I want, I want the Holy Spirit to allow the same thing to happen to you. This is like many, many years ago, perhaps 20 years at least ago at the Florida mall here in, 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 in Orlando, my friend and I had gone to this midnight sale. It was nine till one or something in the morning. And we parked our car at one side of the mall enter that way. But by the time we were ready to leave at one o'clock in the morning, that entrance had been closed. So we had to walk all the way around to get to our car. As we were approaching our car, it was dark. <laughs> no other cars were visible. Nobody else was visible except one car. And there were some men in that one car and it didn't look good. It didn't smell good. Everything in our gut feeling said, we are in danger. My friend and I held each other and just whispered prayers to our God and said, Father, protect us. Listen to me. I, I believe in all my heart, these guys were up to no good, but God. So if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, you may not be hearing my voice today, but God, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, hashtag, but God, hallelujah. I want you to rejoice over this testimony. Touch the heart, touch the thumbs, touch something, say something, shout with me, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. If it had not been. So what is your story? Come on, somebody, just, just give us a shortened version, a preceded version, an abbreviated version, a phrase that lets us know what God set you free from, man. God bless you, Christina. Wow. Come on, somebody else have a testimony. I have another one, man. 2011, 
January 22nd, about 6.45, they're about in the evening. I'm coming from Orlando. Traffic is, is really tight, unusually tight on Point Siena Boulevard. I am about 10 minutes from my house. Next thing you know, I am sandwiched between a car in front and a car behind. And I, my, the front of my car is a little over the train tracks. I had no place to go. Ha. And I was oblivious, to be honest with you, the danger I was in. But God, what if God had not sent angels on that Saturday evening and caused me to hear, get out. I heard, get out. I can't remember unbuckling my seat belt, but I recall slow motion opening my car door and running from my car. No sooner had I ran from my car, it was impacted by the train. I am here to testify, had it not been for the Lord, hallelujah, who was on my side when the enemy planned to take me out, God say, not so, not so, not now. Your time has not yet come somebody testify oh my goodness if it had not been if it, i want to see your testimony i want to hear your your what if testimony i want to hear something man somebody tell me what god rescued you from somebody don't be afraid to testify this is testimony morning glory to god glory to god wow what if i wasn't a child of god hallelujah I testify with you, my brother. God saved me at 14. And I can tell you, if it had not been for the Lord, <laughs> my testimony, my story would have read, the narrative would have looked differently, would have, would have read differently. But God, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord, I probably would not have been in my sound mind. I would not have been stable in my emotions for the madness and the crazy things that happened in my lifetime. But God, what if had, what if it had not been for the Lord who was with you? Come on. That relationship breakup would have sent you in the madhouse. What if it wasn't God who was with you? That cancer diagnosis would have taken you out. What if it wasn't God who was with you? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your story could have been different. Come on, testify, testify. Come on, I want to hear you. I want some reaction. Come on, don't be afraid to go as often as you need to touch the heart, touch the thumb. Let us rejoice in this moment because we too, like David, like Israel can say, if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been that God was on our side, <laughs> he is for you. He is with you. Come on. You are surrounded and you are surrounded by him. Glory to God in the highest. He has not forsaken you. He will never forsake you. He will not forget you. Your name is inscribed on the palm of his hands. I always say God has tattoos because so, uh, Isaiah 49 tells me that he is he has engraved my name on the palm of his hands, man. I am tattooed on the hand of God. Hallelujah. So he sees me every day, every moment of every day. Come on, you are on the mind of God. Woo! Yeah, that person who intended to rob you that night mm -hmm, in the parking lot. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. 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 But walked away because God ask you if you had children i remember that testimony kaisa ask you if you had children and then walked away only god only god what if what if you know my brother said he watched my mother give me medicine or whatever every day we are we are what five years apart i think so if i was if i was at the time two years <laughs> he was only what seven so little boy he sees his mother giving his little sister something to drink he decides no but no adult around he's gonna give me medicine guess what the medicine was the medicine was turpentine jesus lord have mercy do y'all understand i'm supposed to be dead turpentine he gave it to me my mother walked in 
so as soon as he had done so and, and realized what had happened and quickly took action and rushed me to the hospital. I am here to say, what if, what if my mother had been delayed half an hour? What if she had not walked into the house as soon as she did? What if she didn't have the, 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 the sense to know what to do and the, the quick thinking and the action to take? My God, what if, what if, what if? Does anybody have any what if? What if God did not show up in the moment he did? What if God, listen, Esther, what if Vashti hadn't said no to the king? What if Vashti had not been dethroned, that Esther would not have ascended to the throne so she could be the redeemer for all of Israel when Haman had a plot? What if? What if Joseph was not sold into Egypt? What if he didn't end up in prison so he could be in Egypt so when his brethren were hungry, he could provide bread? What if, man, you got to see your story differently? Whoa, my God. What if? Come on, somebody. Come on. What if? What if? What if? What if? Hallelujah. Wow. Holy Spirit prevented a head-on collision when a car turned a corner and drove into my lane thinking he was on his lane. Only God, thank you, Jesus, prevented him even touching your car. We rejoice with you. Somebody, we are testifying in the room. What if, what if, anybody else? What if, what if, what if God had not been on your side? What if God had not sent angels to be your guide? What if God had not been your good, good father, your way maker, your provider? Then the enemy, the, the thief, the schemer, the deceiver, the accuser, Oh, 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 he hates God. He hates God's children. He hates the purposes of God. So he's after destroying. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Who? what if I didn't believe him? Wow. What if I didn't trust him? What if I didn't know him? Then the enemy would have swallowed us up. What sought to swallow you up? What flood came against your life, against your family's life, that was supposed to take you out? What circumstance, what adversity, what trial, oh, what pain, what heartbreak, what grief, what shame, what embarrassment, what exposure was supposed to take you out? But God. But God. But God. So verse 6 calls us to praise him. Verse 6 of Psalm 124 says, we can praise God over and over that he never left us. Listen, let's be honest. Sometimes we are walking through dark seasons and it seems, it appears that God has left us. But how many of you know the poem, Footprints in the Sand? And at the end of the, po the, the, the piece, the, the writer says, all the time, I'm like, God, where are you? I only see, there was a time in my life I saw two sets of footprints and you and I are walking side by side. Oh, he walks with me and talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. But where are you now, God? Where are you now, God? Yeah, somebody's testifying. When I was about to give birth to my daughter in 2005, doctors couldn't get a heartbeat from her nor from me. Wow. They were puzzled. I heard one saying, we have to do something or else both would die. God have mercy if it had not been. I remember somebody asked, Christina, 2014, traveling on the interstate, a car speeding around me, hit the embankment and flipped and completely turned around. But, oh, hallelujah, but God, come on. I know we have testimonies. Share, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? I forgot where I was. Help me. <laughs> what if, what if, what if, what if? I forgot what I was sharing. I, I, got, I got into the testimony right now and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We 
can praise God because he has never left us. Oh, I'm saying that sometimes, oh, wow. Wow. What if God was, wow. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, yeah, for being her, her, my sister's judge and juror that she's a free woman today. Lord, I lift my hands in thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness. I love these testimonies. Wow. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Footprints in the sand. Yeah. So thank you for the reminder. And there are times when you feel like this writer. I, there's, I can look back and I, I see you. I see you there. I see your protection, your provision. I see your guidance. I see your light. I see your di direction. But God, right now, where are you? I only see one set of footprints. And the writer says, God said, you're seeing one set of footprints because I am carrying you. Ooh, I want to shout. God carried you in seasons when you felt that God was absent. God carried you in seasons when God seemed silent. God carried you in seasons when it was dark and you couldn't see where you were going. You didn't know what the next step looked like, but God, hallelujah. Wow. Let's pause right now. Pauline is asking us to pray for her. We're going to pray for you right now. We won't even delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for our sister. We thank you that Father, she's watching this broadcast. And all of us are going to agree right now. Touch the thumbs, touch the heart. So I know you're saying amen and you're agreeing with this prayer for our sister who's watching from London. We declare by the power of the living God that Lord, the resurrected life of Christ will flow through your daughter. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And that same spirit is causing a resurgence in your body, is causing life to come to your body, is causing health to come to you your joints, to your bones, to your tissues, to your glands, to your cells, to every membrane in your body, to every system in your body. We say, we say sickness and affliction, you are illegal. And we command you to get out of our sister's body now in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare life and healing and health over Paul in God in Jesus mighty name. We declare it done. Come on. We declare it done. We declare it done. We lift our hands and we say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being our good, good Father. You never left us. You will never leave us. Verse 7 of Psalm 124. We are free. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I am free. Hallelujah. I am free. I am free from the plot. I am free from the trap. I am free from the pitfall. I am free from everything that hell conspired against my life and destiny. Come on, somebody. You need to know that he who is within you is greater than he who is fighting against you. The God who reigns in your life, the God who rules in your life, the God who is director and governor of your life is greater. There is not even a comparison anyway to, to the enemy of our souls. God is bigger. He's greater. He's mightier. Hallelujah. And he is ensuring that you are delivered from the trap of the enemy. The snare, the psalmist says, is broken. And we have escaped. Somebody shout, I have escaped. Woo! The plot was set. The trap was set, but I escaped. Somebody came into my life. It was a deception. It was a setup, but the trap broke. Hallelujah. The, the, the covers came off and God exposed that that person was not meant to be in my life. You know what I'm talking about. God delivered you from that situation. Some of you, you almost fell. You almost fell into that sin or that trap. But God, what if God had not opened your eyes and shake you as it were and brought you back to consciousness? and brought you back to the realization you are in danger. Run like Joseph. Run, run, run. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Verse 8. For the same God. Mm, wow, another testimony. 2014. Wow, lost my job then. Wow, wow. Husband, yeah, up and left. Had to leave. Wow, home. Literally had to start over in a new state. 
No family. Wow. But God. That's right. But God. But God. Ma. Oh, Jesus. If it had not been. If it had not been. God bless you, Chris. Chris Ann. If it had not been. If it had not been. If it had not been. Thank you for praying for Pauline. If it had not been. I am free. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is amazing. For the same God who made everything. Listen. I didn't plan to go there, but somebody please put Isaiah 54, 16 and 17. I know most of us refer to Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I will condemn. So that's Isaiah 54, 17. Now, I don't have my Bible in front of me, so I'm going to have to paraphrase verse 16. But verse 16 precedes 17 for a reason. And whenever you quote that verse, go back to verse 16. Because verse 16 says, It is He, God, it is you, O God, that made the blacksmith who made the anvil. <laughs> you made the weapon maker. You made and cause him to form and create the weapon. Uh-huh. Get that, verse 16. So God somehow is behind the scenes, orchestrating some things that we're thinking is just the devil. Lord Jesus. Wow. At one point in my life, I went to church thinking I was saved, but never had been introduced to Christ. Wow. Thank God for exposing you to truth. Thank God for bringing you into life. We celebrate with you. Wow. 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 Verse 16, <laughs> Isaiah 54. I wonder if somebody has it, man. Read it for me. I wish you could, but listen, God made the blacksmith who made the anvil, who made the weapons that are being formed. So in other words, <laughs> the enemy is a puppet in the hand of God. Watch this. Israel came out of Egypt, and once they were marching forward, Pharaoh said, Tal, I went to Antigua just for you just now. Some Antiguans are watching. Tal, no. Pharaoh said, what? I am allowing my free labor to go? He said, no, saddle the chariots. Come on, get the chariots together. We got to go after them. Listen to me. Hear me well. The enemy that's coming after you, the enemy that's pursuing you might very well be a setup from God because God lured Pharaoh so he could drown Pharaoh. <laughs> God lured Pharaoh so he could drown Pharaoh. Sometimes God will make it seem like the enemy is about to take you over, overtake you. But God say, hold on, trust me. I got you. I got you. I am, I am your keeper. I am your preserver. I am your protector. And just when Pharaoh thought, I got them. I'm bringing them back into bondage. God caused the sea to close the same path that you walked on to enter freedom is the same path the enemy is going to drown on. Lord, I want to shout in this place today. Somebody help me shout. Touch the thumbs. Touch the heart. The same path. The same path. The same track. The same road. Come on. The same. The same. The same one you went through. And the enemy says, I am coming after you. God's going to close that trap, that, that track. God's going to close that, that, that Red Sea. God's going to close it up. And the enemy who is pursuing you will be drowned. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my relationship with you. Yes, no weapons. So the weapons that are being formed were created and made by someone who, who was created and made by God, the blacksmith. And God says, they are just puppets in my hand. Ooh, I'm only refining you, child of God. I am only sharpening you. Ooh, I am only making you, you, you a, point, a more pointed arrow. So when I release you into the enemy's camp, you will do 
great damage. You need to understand what you can see is that behind the scenes, I am orchestrating my purposes and my plans. Behind the scenes, I am causing that which I have ordained before the beginning of time to come to pass. God says in Isaiah 46 and 10, Isaiah 46 and 10, God says, listen, be, I, I planned the beginning before the ending. I plan the end, sorry, the ending before the beginning. <laughs> God already pre-established, pre-determined the outcome. Somebody need to hashtag and say, the fight is fixed. <laughs> Have you ever seen those fires that were established by the fire department because of the forestry department? Because they knew by lighting this fire, they were going to prevent more fires. Ooh. In other words, God says, by causing this to happen, I am blocking that from happening. Oh, ah, by causing this situation that you think this shouldn't happen, I don't understand. Don't, don't worry, don't worry, I got you. That is only to stop what the enemy has sought to do. That is a fixed fire to prevent further fire. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't let me get happy by myself, somebody. Come on, let me see your hearts. Let me see your thumbs because this word is too good to keep, to keep by yourself. You got to start a watch party with this one. You got to share this one with somebody. Our God, our creator, he himself is our helper and defender. What if? What if? What if? God didn't save me when he did. What if I wasn't rejected <laughs> by that organization? What if, what if they had embraced me, understood me and, and positioned me? Uh, what if they, they saw giftings and, and callings and anoint? What if I wouldn't be here? I wouldn't be doing this, but the rejection was redirection. You got to see what God is doing. What if, what if? What if you were accepted in that school? Uh, you wouldn't have met your spouse. What if? What if you had gone to that other place? Come on. What if you would not have met that person who connected you to that other person who connected you to that other person and got you into... Per oh, what if? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God is strategic, man. God is intentional. God is purposeful. God knows what he's doing. So when the enemy comes, and he's a liar, by the way, if he says, hey, you just don't listen to him, whatever he says, the opposite is true. Mm -hmm. God is your defender. God is your deliverer. And the same God who prevented some things, the same God who said not so, the God who blocked that thing, the God who interrupt that plot the god who caused you to avoid that pitfall that same god that same god is with you today will be with you tomorrow and will be with you forever never you forget that he cannot cannot change so the lord bless you <laughs> i feel encouraged myself is something else when the word you share blesses you man it's something else when the very word you're sharing and the impartation you're making to others comes back at you my god oh i love it holy spirit i am i am encouraged and i trust you are as well because listen where you are once you're walking in obedience and submission to god to holy spirit you're in the will of god and listen, in the will of God doesn't always feel good. In the will of God is not, is not always cushiony and soft and comfy. No, no, no. It is peaceful. <laughs> but sometimes that peace is not the absence of war and turmoil. That peace is just that I know I am in the hand of God. I am in the care of God. So you go. Go forward knowing that the same God, who blocked those things. Ah, what if I hadn't traveled to the Virgin Islands to live? I would not have met my husband. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. And what if the Lord didn't let me get to Grenada to meet your pastor's wife, who then invited me to St. Thomas, who, so I could meet you. So look at God. Look at the orchestration of purpose. 
Nothing is coincidence, child of God. Nothing is happenstance. Nothing is just, you know, no, God has orchestrated all things. Hallelujah. I am glad you're encouraged, Shemay. God bless. Oh, my cousin Eulinus is here. God bless you. There's you're here. Come on, guys. You've got to share this broadcast. And you, we still have about 10 more days. They're about, I think, on nine for 21 days of thanksgiving join the group go f i will put the link uh here in the comment section when i'm done 21 days of thanksgiving we're almost there i want to encourage you to intentionally focus every day on those things we tend to overlook uh and take for granted and offer prayers of thanksgiving to god so join the group all right share the video and remember, I do upload these videos to the my YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel so you, you can always see when there's another video uploaded and share the past videos. Share this one. Let's continue the praise party because I believe there are others who will be encouraged by your testimony and will also share theirs. All right? I love you guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Pauline, we continue to declare life and health over you. We continue to speak God's purposes manifested in your life. The Lord bless each of you as you go through this week. And I know you're going to have a week where you say, God, I thank you for delivering me from the snare, the trap of the fowler. See you next time right here.